quick accounting from this video onwards I am planning to discuss with you investment appraisals. So why we need to have an appraisal method for investments because let's say um, you are an investor you have money so you want to invest on something but when it comes to a capital project you invest a huge amount for a long period of time right so if something goes wrong it cannot be recovered or else it can be recovered but you cannot do it up to the expected level sometimes uh, from the damage you had due to the investment so those bad repercussions damages can be affected to your other business activities too. So, what we want to do before going for a for an investment, we want to evaluate it. We want to uh, appraise it. So, in simple terms, whatever the decisions we make in our lives, so we think sometimes not once, twice, sometimes hundred times. So we analyze well, when you are making a decision. So whether this is good for me, what are the bad uh, part of this. So likewise you evaluate whatever the decision you are going to make. Sim uh, similarly in a business, especially because it's a money involvement. So most of the time each and every transaction, each and every uh, decision you are making based on money so when it comes to financial terms it is required to make those decisions wisely so why we need to appraise and evaluate those uh, capital projects or investment uh, investments because you are spending a huge amount for a longer period of time expecting returns for many years if something goes wrong uh, the bad repercussions or as the uh, results cannot be recovered or whatever the bad things cannot be recovered it will be affected to your other business activities too so then what we want to do first of all you want to do a cost benefit analysis right so again it is similar to our personal lives when we are making a decision for an example let's say now you want to go abroad for your higher studies so there are two options either you can go abroad or else you can do that particular uh, degree in our country so what are the factors effects for this so you may think so it may be your financial capacity, your family background. Let's say you are the only child in your family. If so, how can you go? What happened to your parents? Likewise, so many factors will be affected for this particular decision. Likewise, uh, and, and also whether I'm doing it in Sri Lanka or in another country, what are the cost, uh, what, are, what is the cost involvement and what are the benefits? I can have so through uh, these alternatives likewise you check the cost and the benefits similarly in a business when you are making an investment decision first item should be you should do a cost benefit analysis second one you want to select a suitable appraisal techniques there are uh, many appraisal techniques which we are planning to discuss in future out of those techniques which one is going to uh, use or else which one uh, will be the best for your company and second one the third one after selecting you are going to implement you are going to apply the selected uh, technique and you are going to decide whether you are going to move with this or else you are going to proceed with this project or not right so that's how investment appraisal techniques will work right now tell me uh, whatever the technique you are going to use right there are many techniques i will discuss them later whatever the technique you are going to use the most important thing what are the items you are going to consider again the same example so sometimes in our personal lives when you are making decisions we highly concern about some factors and some factors we don't uh, consider as we ignore. 
we don't want to think about those factors when we are making decisions. Likewise, I told you when it comes to the business, you want to do the cost-benefit analysis. What is the, this cost? and benefits what are these costs and benefits so you can see them you, you see them or else you can experience them in terms of cash flows either it may be a cash outflow or else cash inflow right so when you are dealing with cash inflows and outflows so can you remember you have the rule of cash inflow or, the, or else the you want to have an idea about the relevant cost so Again, I go to my personal experience. When I am uh, uh, making a decision in my personal life, so some factors are relevant for me and some factors, so they are not relevant for me. So likewise, in the business, when you are making decisions, some cost items, especially uh, where in the business world, we are dealing with financial terms, money involvement is there. So, what are the cost items uh, will be affected with our decision? What are the cost items won't be affected with our decision? So, relevant cost and irrelevant cost, right? So, can you remember the rule of relevant cost or the cash flow? When you are making a decision, so what are the cost items? So, what are the cash flows relevant and what are the cash flows uh, are not relevant so simply uh, you are not considering sunk cost and you are not considering non cash flow items what is a sunk cost first of all tell me so the term tells you what is a sunk cost sunk already incurred cannot be recovered so sunk already sunk right so that is the sunk cost so you don't want to think, let's say now we are going to decide uh, whether we are going to launch a new product or not. So last three months, we invited a, a foreign, a so well-reputed researcher and for research and development. So we paid him, let's say, 500000 for the research. Now, whether you are going to launch this or not, the decision whether you are going to launch this or not so what happened to the payment uh, made to the particular research already done so can you understand now so already incurred and cannot be recovered so now we are not going to launch this so can we ask mr james can you have that 500000 again because we are not uh, planning to launch this so we are not doing this so uh, can you have that money so will he pay us back no so we cannot it cannot be recovered and already incurred so those are some costs then the other one non cash flow items what are they depreciation it's an accounting treatment only we know so it's an it's not a real cash outflow but it's a accounting treatment or it's an accounting treatment only so we don't consider some cost and non-cash flow items such as depreciation for this uh, cash flow, the investment appraisals. But what are the items especially we want to consider? First thing is the incremental cost. What is incremental cost? What the cost items will be affected, will be changed with our decision. Incremental cost. And uh, what are the other items we want to consider? Opportunity cost. What do you mean by opportunity cost? It is the loss of alternatives right so when we are selecting a project we have few alternatives we have options right so we want to uh, according to the amount we have we have to select one of them right when we are selecting an alternative what is the loss of other alternatives that is the opportunity cost so opportunity cost and incremental cost you want to consider when it comes to the rule of cash flow or as the rule of relevant cost but what are the items you are going to ignore? Uh, Non-cash flow items such as depreciation and sunk cost. Having that knowledge. Now let's discuss about the uh, types of investment appraisers. Or appraisers, different types of investment. So uh, thereafter, after this, I am going to have separate videos for each and every technique. So before winding up this lesson, 
I'll introduce what are the investment appraisal techniques we do have in the business world. First one is we call the payback period. The second one we have net present value and very popular term NPV, right? And internal rate of return, IRR. And the other one, accounting rate of return, ARR. So what are the, uh, there are many investment appraisal techniques. Out of these, uh, these four techniques I am going to discuss with you. Payback period, uh, net present value or else NPV, internal rate of return, IRR, accounting rate of return, ARR. Now tell me, so having all these knowledge, so let's say now we are going to learn all of them. Now tell me in the practical scenario, which one you are going to use? So it depends on the company's decision or it's, uh, it is the management decision. But it's better to go for a combination of few or else sometimes combination of all to make the best decision. Because when we are learning about these investment appraisal techniques, we learn pros and cons of each technique. So then you will realize if you are going to use only payback period in my company, this will not work out. Right, so that means that this will not give me the best option or the best answer. So it's better to apply another technique with this. Right, so uh, after learning the advantages and disadvantages or as the pros and cons of each technique and the method we can use it and what are the technical uh, items you want to have. So after learning everything, you may decide whether I am going to select only one or else a combination of two, three or all of them. So let's discuss them in future. So keep in touch with me. So that is math in Jiva. Under that you have a separate uh, playlist for accounting students. So you may subscribe my YouTube channel and Click the bell button to get the future notification because uh, quickly I'm planning to send the other videos relevant for this topic. It is investment appraisal. Till then, see you everybody.